I am Ciprian Flanier Frem, and this is a demonstration of my manipulator design to be mounted on top of the title bot, able to pick up Festo pucks from the floor and place them on shelves mounted at 200 millimeters, 400 millimeters, and 600 millimeters above the floor. This entire design has to be done purely in simulation with the purpose of validating it before proceeding to a physical build. In my case, I have the turtle bot represented by the yellow cylinder and then the shelf represented by the three different red rectangles. If I start the code, I can see how my four degrees of movement arm, an arm with four joints, is now at the third shelf. And because the arm is set on the Ford kinematics, I can use one of the six different joints in order to money control the arm. So let's say I want to move from this shelf, I want to move to the second one. So now I am placing a puck on the second shelf, as can be seen. Furthermore, the first joint at the origin, which is right here on top of the turtle bot, is used in order to change the rotation of the arm. That way I am able not only to pick up the pucks around the turtle bot, but also put the puck at any position for the entire length of the shelf. Now, if I switch from the forward kinematics to the inverse kinematics by using this switch here at the bottom, I will go to the robot base as it is set on that. So if I do that, you can see how the robot arm retracts back to its origin. Now, in inverse kinematics, I can either use the I can select the inverse kinematics here, which is a manual control using the Z, Y, and X sliders, or I can use the pre-calculated positions, which are were completed by using the information from the forward kinematics, which is presented through the interface in the form of the roll, pitch, your Euler angles, quaternion, and translation vector. All this information is useful for when calculating the inverse kinematics. I also have the homogeneous matrix of the end effector and the rotation matrix. So now that we are at the origin of the turtle bot, let's choose, for example, to go to the third shelf. The robot arm will go to the third shelf after a small delay by itself. And once it reaches the third shelf, it will stop there. On the interface, there is a button called Origin Active. This gives the user the possibility of having the robot arm return to the origin by itself without requiring manual movement or without having to go from one shelf to another without going through the origin. So if I turn on that, the robot arm will return to the origin, which has been seen earlier. And now from here, since the switch is on, I can choose to go, for example, to the second shelf. So the robot arm will go to the second shelf and then by itself, it will go back to the origin of the robot. The arm itself has four joints as specified earlier. The length of the first one is zero as it helps the rotation, as can be seen here. Then 31 centimeters for this one here, 25 and then 10 centimeters. This is more than enough to have the robot placed at 50 centimeters away from the shelf and the robot arm reaching any of the shelves. Let's try, for example, to go to the first shelf. And we can also see how we have the joint positions down here. This is also useful when defining the origin. This can be seen here. This information is then sent to the entire system in order to understand where it needs to start from and where it needs to go. Here I have a case structure where I have the predetermined X, Y, and Z positions, which are sent through the homogeneous transform to the Cartesian kinematics, which calculates the intermediate positions so that we have an animation. And then these intermediate positions are sent to the actual inverse kinematics VI, which calculates all the information required in order to move all the joints to that position. And then that is sent to the 
scene object here, which merges the shelf and the turtle board, which has been defined right here at the top, with the robot arm and then display it in a 3D picture. The ability of it returning home, let's go to the ground floor, for example, to demonstrate that again, is given with this switch here. This switch, once active, goes into an AND gate with a timer. Once this timer is complete, it changes this case here from false to true, which means that it will always return to its origin at the end, as can be seen now with the animation of the robot. In order to simplify and optimize the inverse kinematics calculations, I am using a mask rotation. So I am masking the rotation on the roll, pitch, and yaw, as this information is not important and relevant in our case. This helps us to have the system faster. And I also have a max steps of 30,000. Now, most of the time, 10 or 15,000 is enough in order to calculate inverse kinematics. However, if the user uses manual inverse kinematics control, a uh, higher step count may be required. Now, I have given this code the ability to be switched from a four joints manipulate arm to a six joints manipulate arm. This is extremely useful in case the user decides to have more maneuverability in order to go around obstacles, maneuver around obstacles in order to reach certain objects, let's say the tester packs or the shelves. So in order to do that, the user needs to stop the code, simply flip the switch from four to six degrees of movement. Let's keep it on inverse kinematics with the origin active and let's go back to the robot base. So now if I start the code, the robot arm will be at its origin. This can be seen here and now it has six joints. So if I go to the third shelf, for example, it works the exact same way. It goes to the third shelf, then it goes down to the origin. We go to the second shelf and that happens. And then we go back and then we go to the first shelf. And you can see how all of this information and all of these different positions can be achieved without any type of code modification as the code has been made specifically to be able to be used with arms that can have two degrees of movement, six, four, pretty much anything, as long as the positions are reachable. Let's go to the ground floor as well, so we can complete the entire setup. And this arm can be also used with, um, with forward kinematics. So as soon as the robot arm reaches its origin again, let's go from inverse to forward. So now that I went from inverse to forward, I just switched it. So I can use all the six different sliders to modify every single joint the way that I prefer, the way the user decides to do. And it also has an added rotation here at the end in order to increase the agility of the R. Here on the right side in the code, the way it works with the six joints is that it switches, once the selector is on, it switches from this four joints, this arm that has been defined with four joints, to an arm that has six joints positions defined for the origin, and an arm with six joints, with 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 15 centimeters, 15 centimeters, zero here at the end of factor, and then 10 again with two of them rotated by 180 degrees for the rotational movement. All this information is provided the exact same way and controls everything in the code. If we switch back to the forward kinematics, as can be seen from the code, I have all the different joints, which can be seen in the interface, which are sent to an array, which is then sent to the forward kinematics, which provides the information, the position of all the joints to the 3D picture, together with the shelves and the top of it, as specified earlier. And it also provides an output to the user, so I can have the rotation matrix, Euler angles, translation, and effective quaternion, all this information that is relevant to me when calculating the position of the inverse kinematics and the factor, and also for research purposes. 
With all this said, I would like to thank you for your time. And this concludes my manipulated design demonstration.